Hi, this is Sean with LMU Energy, and today we're going to show you how to swap the filter, the HEPA filter, in your 2016 and later Tesla Model S. This is going to apply to all of the April 2016 and later built Tesla Model S's. They're going to have this uh, big HEPA filter holder. Some vehicles will already have a HEPA filter in place. Those are going to be the ones that have purchased bioweapon defense mode with their vehicle. Others will have that filter tray in place, but no filter in it. And in either case, you can put in a new HEPA filter and get the same benefits, whether you purchase bioweapon defense or not with your vehicle. So today we'll show you how to do that. When you do the HEPA filter in your vehicle, we recommend that you get our filter from us at omu.com. Our filter has got a little tighter pleats than the factory one, which means you have a higher surface area. So when the air flows through, there's more, there's more surface area for it to flow through and trap, and trap uh, the, the debris. We're also HEPA rated, just like the one from, from Tesla, which means that you have a 0 0.03 micrometer uh, particle or particulate will get trapped up to that 99.98% efficiency. So that's really cool. And we also added a carbon layer in the back. It's an activated charcoal which helps to polish the air and, and remove any noxious odors. And so that, that's another really cool perk. Uh, you can get those at our website at omu.com. And we think it's a wonderful time to do it when you're doing your 12 volt battery swap, especially you're doing your first 12 volt battery swap on your car, maybe two years or so old at that point. And that's a good schedule to, to do your HEPA filter replacements as well every two or three years. Of course, once you've gone to the lithium version of your 12 volt battery, you won't be doing that battery swap very often. But at that point, hopefully you've done the uh, HEPA swap with our filter, and then you'll be able to easily just every couple years swap that filter out. All right, so the process we're gonna go through for the filter swap, it's gonna be we're gonna open the frunk, and then we're gonna remove all of the trim and lining out of the frunk area. And then you're gonna see this big, beautiful HEPA filter in front of you. That filter and its tray are gonna come out of the vehicle, and you're gonna remove the filter inside of the tray. Some of them, it's really easy to do. Some, it's a little more difficult. It just depends on how much adhesive the guy at the factory decided to put in there when he built it. Uh, it's a lot of, there's a lot of variability that we have found throughout doing these on a lot of different vehicles. So, you'll take that tray out, you'll get the filter out, then you're gonna put your new filter in there. There's a little foam surround, and that'll, that'll, keep, it, that'll keep the air from uh, flowing around the filter and keep it snug. And then you'll reinstall that, reinstall the trunk lining and everything else. And then you'll have this brand new beautiful filter. You'll be breathing fresh, clean air with a HEPA rating and um, feeling really good. The tools you'll need are going to be a 10 millimeter wrench and a 13 millimeter wrench. Sometimes you don't need the 13 millimeter. It depends on which, which month the vehicle was built. It tends to fluctuate. Uh, usually you don't need the 13 millimeter, but in some cases you do. I use a cordless drill with a socket attachment on it. That makes this process go through much easier and, and more quickly. And so I recommend you having the same. For the filter swap, the only thing that you really need to be concerned about with safety is wearing gloves just because you're gonna be working in a dirty space, potentially. You're gonna get a lot of dirt on your hands and that can be, that can be kind of crappy. Uh, also, you're gonna have different wrench, uh, wrenches you might be turning and you could bang your knuckles on something. So be careful and wear gloves. All right, let's get started with your HEPA filter swap. All we got to do to get started is open the front and go at it. All right, we'll disassemble the front. This same process whether you're doing a 12 volt battery swap or the HEPA filter swap out. So it's a great time to do both. We're going to remove the trim lining starting with this top one. You just lift up and everything will unclick. Do one side and then the other. And then set that down to the side. Then you'll do your side trim panels. Same thing, they're all just clicked in. You lift up. You don't need to remove these rubber stoppers. You can leave those in place when you take it out. Same on this side. Front trim piece, same process. Just lift up and it'll unclick. Try not to flex too much on one side. 
because the center tends to hold and you might bend it at the middle. So start over on the other side after you get one side up. Then it'll pop right up. Next step, we're going to take this carpet liner out. And you just peel out from under and remove that way. After you've got the carpet liner loosened, you're going to unplug the light and the, the emergency release button from the front. And then lift that liner out and set it to the side. Now you're going to push the little wire harness that holds those two plugs. You're going to push it through the tub. Then we'll take off all these 10 millimeter bolts, unpry these two plastic uh, locks, and we'll be able to lift this out. A nice to have tool at this point, if you're doing it with a driver like this, is a flex attachment that you can put on to get these bottom two corner bolts. Once you have all of, once you have all of those bolts out, you can just leave them in the tub. It's a fine place for them to, to hang out while they're waiting. And then we're going to remove these two plastic clips at the front. All right, to remove these, you can use a flathead screwdriver and just pry them up. And they'll come out. At this point, we'll take out this tray in the back. There's two rubber hoses that hold it. You're just gonna put, pull those downwards on the side. And there's another row of three clips that you'll take off at the back. Now this part will lift out. With a couple of clips that you loosen on the sides. So you've got that out of the way, you can lift the tub out, and set that to the side. Now you see your beautiful big HEPA filter. So remove that. Now that you've got the trunk out of the way, it's actually loose and you just kind of shimmy it forward and lift it out. All right, so making this swap. If you had a vehicle that has the HEPA filter in it, which means you have bioweapon defense mode in your vehicle, then you'll need to remove this filter. If your vehicle did not have bioweapon defense mode, it's actually better off at this point because there won't be a filter here, but you'll still have this black tray. And in those vehicles, all you'll do is install your new filter in there. With the ones that have this filter in place, we'll need to cut it out. So you're going to want to wear gloves and be very safe and use a razor blade. Going to go along the edges and along the center to cut this filter. There's going to be some tearing and uh, of the filter and then you have to clean up the edges. Depending on which year and how aggressive they were with their glue, there could be a kind of a little bit of hassle to get to get all the way through there or it could just have a little bit of glue tacked in on the two sides and pull right out uh, you'll 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 know once you start doing it um, this process could take anywhere from two minutes to, to half an hour just depending on how much hassle there is with that glue once you've completed taking out the HEPA filter out of the the tray then you won't ever have to deal with that process again because you'll be able to just do easy swaps of filters into the into the tray all right we got the old filter out, put the new one in. 
to get the old one out on this one, we did a, we did a cut down the center and then we kind of trimmed the glue out and, and pulled it out. Make sure that you get as much of the glue as you can along the edges cleaned out so that your new filter fits in. It's a snug fit. So you want to make sure you get, uh, get it the space it needs. To get it in place, you're just going to set it there. This tube will connect to the back, the back register on the top there. And then the other, the other tray, the tray is going to come in here with the two drain tubes. That's going to connect to the top line. Then we'll put the front in and we'll resecure everything. So here's the other tray that will connect right here. Connects in the front. You'll hear it click in place. There's a couple of rubber tubes. Just push those to reconnect. Those allow water to run off and out and should prevent mildew smells from forming when this tray gets wet and you're driving in wet weather. Now that that's in, we'll put the front in. With this part, make sure you guide this wire back through this hole before you secure everything. Otherwise, you won't be able to get to it and you'll have to take everything back out to get it. So that's in place. You take your 10 millimeter bolts and line them all back up. You might have to lift the filter assembly up or push it down depending to line up the holes because these back holes are actually all grabbing the filter assembly and not the body or anything like that of the car. So they are what holds the filter up. So once you get one side loosely, loosely put in, then you can go to the other side and do the same. I just get all of the bolts started slightly and then come back in with the cordless drill and finish them all off. The only ones that are actually holding the tub in place are these on the side. They, they bolt into the frame rails. So these two here and those two on that side. Again, make sure you're on a low torque setting so you can zip those in place. Have one of these flex adapters. This is a good time to use it to tighten those. Next, come with your black clips. We're going to put those along the back. There's three of them. Might be easier without gloves if you're wearing thick gloves. The way they work is you have the, the little insert pushed upwards, make sure that's up, get it in place, and then click it down. Then you have two more in the front. Now you can bring the carpet liner in. When you're putting the carpet liner in place, make sure you connect the light and the emergency release button. Then press the carpet down lift up on the inner portion of the rubber edge to slide it underneath and work your way all the way around.
Now that you've got the carpet liner in place, you can put the trim back on. You have to put the front trim piece on first, then the two sides, then the trim piece across the top. They'll all just set in place, push down to snap down, and then they're secure. Make sure you get the rubber stopper or frunk uh, alignment adjuster up through that hole and clip down. top piece will clip in place. When making this last trim piece installation, make sure you take this orange tag and pull it so that it's visible when the trim's all in place. All right, that's it. You now have an advanced HEPA filter installed in your Tesla Model S. We appreciate your time today. Thanks for watching our video. We hope you learned something and we were able to help you with your vehicle. For support, please reach out to us. Anything you need, support at omu.com is our email address. You can go see us at omu.com. We've got a live chat available. If we're not immediately available, leave a message there and we'll get back to you when we can. And, and address whatever, whatever you got going on. And we also have a page with FAQs, installation videos and manuals and other helpful information. And that's at omu.com support. We hope to hear from you. Thank you so much and enjoy your vehicle.